Hello everybody, welcome to episode 2 of Altengrad, a central European city that we started building with the basic idea that we are going to start in the past and advance to modern times as the project progresses. We are now still around 100 years in the past, a time period where we will stay for a really long time until we somewhat complete a huge part of the project, so we can then do some changes to already existing areas as we advance forward. In the last episode, I mostly outlined the idea of this project and also started building the part of the city on this hill by the river, where there are the castles, palaces and a cathedral. By the way, speaking of castles and palaces, your feedback for the last episode, which was by the way really great and I do appreciate it, made me research some more historical facts about various kinds of things and for some future episodes, not this one, I really want to talk about palaces and castles in general, especially the differences in their meanings in different languages because it's quite interesting, at least I thought so. But like I said, later, because today we will expand the blocks of the old buildings we started doing last time and we will also build an old square with some detailing and some modern element. First I'm going to outline the basic shape of this newly built square. As you can already kind of see, I am having this road go down from the places we built last time, which means that this square is going to be positioned a lot lower than those uh, places. It kind of makes sense if this place, if this square uh, is, uh, is already built in, let's say, medieval ages, then like some of you rightly pointed out in the comments, it would not make much sense to have some kind of a, some kind of a commercial square a uh, commercial square, you know, positioned very high on some kind of a mountain or some kind of a hill because it would not really be all that easy for people to transport all the stuff they wanted to sell, you know, to that place. So, I don't know, maybe if this square was uh, was already built back in the medieval ages, then it probably might have been positioned something like this. Now, in the future, we will also need to think about uh, various kinds of roads because if this is a historical square, and I kind of would like to make it to be, then all the roads that go from this square should probably lead somewhere into some very important areas, let's say some regional centers, you know, apart from Altengrad, obviously. Basically, main roads of that era, of the medieval era, should probably converge into this square. So that's kind of something that I need to think about when I'm doing the expansion of the road system or around, around these parts of the city. It can obviously be changed because we are already in, the, in relatively modern times at this point, so all kinds of different paths and roads could have probably been uh, changed by at this point, right? But anyway, what am I what am I building in here? So I placed just a couple of uh, buildings uh, again made by Titan mostly because uh, he's probably he's probably the king of all these old buildings that I can use here for this particular style. So no surprises in there. Now at this point, I'm still not exactly sure how the city is going to progress in terms of you know the layout and where am I going to consider the old uh, fortifications, for example. I kind of am trying to already outline the let's say, the remnants of the medieval fortifications. Well, not really medieval, but slightly slightly newer. By building this gate, for example, I'm going to move it a bit uh, away from the square, as you can see here. I'm not so sure if maybe I'm going to move it a bit further than that as well. And uh, it's probably going to act as some sort of a last uh, historical, you know, remnant of uh, historical witness of where the old fortifications might have been. I know, I know, this particular gate is not like a gate for any kind of city walls. It's a gate for a bridge, I know. I also live in Prague, so I probably should know it. But, uh, you know, there are not that many gates uh, in the workshop, so I just have to use some that uh, just look good, right? And this one definitely does look very, very good, so I'm probably going to use it. But uh, anyway, we are going to place some more buildings in here to just, uh, you know, fill this place. We obviously need to fill all kinds of these places. We need to create a lot of these, uh, these different blocks. And this era in particular, or the buildings from this era, are kind of typical, or well, these blocks, I should probably say, are kind of typical uh, with their, uh, the density that they are built in. And kind of not really having any, any plan. At least it can seem that way when you look at it uh, from above, like from, you know, like maps or something like that. And you can always see these blocks of old, really old buildings being very, very mixed with different styles and all kinds of different sizes of the buildings and shapes. And it kind of looks like people just built all kinds of buildings, you know, without any kind of 
thought about uh, how it's going to interact with their surroundings, right? So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Now, obviously, as we for as, as we progress in time and as we progress, you know, further away from this place, which is probably the, the center of the city in here, uh, the historical center of the city, then we are obviously going to place buildings that are, you know, a bit more orderly, let's say, right? So in here, we are just going to do this style and then we're going to do something else. So, you know, I'm not just placing buildings randomly. It actually has a purpose. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. Anyway, to kind of uh, explain what I'm doing in here. So at this point, I really wanted to think about already about some uh, some kind of connections for pedestrians. I know it's not really all that super important at this point in regards to like traffic and stuff, but at this point, I really wanted to build some kind of uh, stairs in here because if you have uh, cities with uh, different elevations for the, the, the castle, let's say, or the castle that used to be a castle and now it's some kind of a upper quarter, then they usually have some kind of stair networks just connecting all kinds of different levels. And that's exactly what we are doing over here. Now, this place in particular, exactly, exactly in here, might have been some sort of a side gate, let's say, to, to the castle that used to be on this hill and now it's just uh, it's just stairs you know it's just a connection to the upper quarter so I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of detail it I'm trying to play with it uh, trying to position the building so that uh, again it kind of looks uh, very mixed and it's not looking like it has you know some kind of a, some kind of a plan uh, some kind of a major like say design choice made for this place. I'm just trying to place the buildings randomly, kind of randomly, to make it all work. So we are going to use all these uh, all these very very nice stairs, all these nice networks, the brick networks, and we are going to position even some buildings as procedural objects because obviously I cannot put uh, the roads uh, there. So we are going to use them like this. It means that the buildings cannot be repainted so they only have the same uh, standard color. In this case, those two buildings have the blue color, but it's kind of all right. I'm not actually sure if buildings were colored back in the day. I know that today most of these buildings are usually like refurbished and, you know, made to look like they are in original shape, but I'm actually not sure how it was in medieval ages. Well, not really medieval ages, but let's say uh, 1800s, 1700s. Were buildings actually this colorful? I'm I'm not really sure, honestly. But even if they weren't, I don't really have the means of uh, repainting exactly those two. Maybe other buildings I could, but uh, not really all of them. I suppose that buildings could have been colorful, but uh, probably not in some like super wild colors. And it probably differs uh, by region quite a lot, I would imagine. All right, so while I was uh, just, uh, you know, talking about that, I almost finished the stairs going all the way to the top. I kind of, at this point, started to think that uh, maybe where the stairs, actually I think I already kind of mentioned that, that there might have been some kind of a side gate towards the old, old castle, you know, some kind of a castle that's no longer uh, in there. And maybe this row of buildings that I'm going to build right here, it might have been a place where the old castle walls might have actually been built. Now the old castle, you know, there might there might be all kinds of stories related to that castle. It might have been destroyed in some kind of a war. It burned down or people just, you know, tore it down because it was no longer needed. You know, something like that. I just don't really want to build like a super old, like a military looking castle in this place. But we are kind of going to make some, uh, let's say, uh, maybe notes where it might have been positioned. Maybe the walls might have been exactly in here where I'm placing this retaining wall. You know, some something like that, just to make it look like there probably was something before these buildings were here. I'm trying to make uh, this uh, side alley with some uh, less uh, fancy buildings, let's say, because uh, that probably would make sense that these uh, these places where people no longer where well people. Uh, not really went to that much, you know, it probably had some uh, not so fancy looking buildings because they really didn't need to be all that fancy, right? People didn't really uh, see them too much, so no reason for them to be all that nice looking. Apart from the buildings, obviously, on the main square that we uh, started building some moments ago, where buildings probably uh, were required to be very, very nice. And obviously, very rich people could only afford to build houses there, but uh, obviously the rest of the people also had to live in the city and those probably would be uh, somewhere in these kinds of streets. 
But, uh, you know, that's just my justification for placing these kinds of buildings. Maybe it was completely different back in the day. Now, again, surfaces. And this is kind of uh, important in here. I really want to blend different kinds of surfaces. And I'm really starting to use uh, height differences to work in my favor. Because if this place did not have any height differences, then it would be an absolute pain to work with different decals and different kinds of cobblestone textures because I wouldn't be really able to create uh, very nice uh, borders between them. But if you have differences in height, then you can just blend textures together because of the natural, you know, working principles of the decals, let's say, the way that they slowly, slowly disappear when, uh, when you change the, the height, the elevation. Anyway, we are back with those stairs and surfaces again. I need to position some kind of cobblestone texture for the surfaces on the stairs. And as you can see, I'm using it as procedural object so that it's not going to display on the retaining walls. Because unfortunately, decals do display on networks, which is kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because uh, and in some instances, it might be, it might be good. Well, actually, now thinking about it, I'm kind, I can't really think of, a, of an instance where it's actually good. So maybe if decals did not appear on networks... Well, actually, no, they have to, because networks are not just retaining walls, but also, like, roads, right? And you kind of do want to have decals on roads, so yeah. So yeah, uh, displaying decals on, on networks is actually very, very good, but sometimes it's a bit annoying. Anyway, we are back with the square. And I decided to finally make the city look like, or at least put an element into the city to make it look like we are actually in the 20th century all, already. Now, it was actually quite interesting learning about uh, trams in, in the past, because I kind of thought that uh, electric trams, uh, that's kind of you know what I mean when I say trams. When I say trams, I obviously mean electric ones, right? The ones we're going to be using in the city. The electric trams were kind of a thing for the late 19th century. And what's kind of interesting is that cities that already had some sort of tram uh, you know, networks already in place, not electric, obviously, they kind of adopted the electricity for the trams, uh, you know, almost instantaneously as the electricity for trams was already tested, which actually happened in Russia first time, which is kind of interesting, but uh, somewhat understandable at the same time. But anyway, it happened uh, towards the end of the 19th century in the 80s and 90s. And uh, like I said, a lot of Central European cities, cities that already had some sort of uh, railroad networks through the city, they adopted the electric, uh, electric traction for the trams very, very quickly, which was kind of interesting. In the span of like 10 years, most of the cities in those, in those uh, geographical locations already had electric trams, which was kind of interesting because when I was doing this video for the first time, the commentary for the first time, I said that, uh, you know, it probably varied a lot and some cities probably adopted electric trams really late, but actually no, actually that was not the case. They adopted it very, very quickly. Anyway, what am I doing here? Surfaces, again, that's going to be a common theme for many, many more episodes to come. We're going to be doing the surfaces and that's probably going to be what I'm going to spend the most time with. Anyway, we are going to use uh, three types types of surfaces in here. I'm first going to use some sort of a not so fancy looking cobblestone for the outline of the square, let's say. Then I'm going to use this slightly more modern looking cobblestone for the tracks because that kind of makes sense. You know, the tracks are something new. Let's say that these tracks are here for maybe like uh, 50 years, maybe something like that at this point in time, of course. So they might have been somewhat uh, recently constructed. And then we're going to have the inner uh, part of the square, which I'm going to build uh, in just a moment. And I'm going to put a third type of cobblestone in there just to kind of make it more interesting, because with these kinds of cobblestone decals in here, the bigger surfaces can get uh, really boring really fast, especially, you know, the bigger they get, the more boring it can it can be unless you do some detailing and, you know, stuff like that. But unfortunately, like I explained before, you can't really put uh, any kinds of additional decals 
on existing decals for example some kind of a uh, stains or you know wear or some kind of you know marks like oil marks from you know vehicles or something like that right so you can't really do that which means that you are only able to use these kinds of textures which probably means that you should alter between them and use different ones so that's kind of the reasoning why i went for this kind of uh, thing and as you can see i am basically using every single tile on this square of these cobblestones as procedural objects because that's the only way I can make sure that they are not going to be displayed where I don't want them to and I can have this curb as some sort of a border between the various types of cobblestone and it's actually nice that I'm using this kind of a relatively wide curb because I can then have some sort of a some sort of a working space with uh, with those uh, edges because otherwise it would be really impossible to get it exactly right and we also have some details, tiny little details that I just could not figure out how to do. So you can you can somewhat see me do it in here. This kind of took a long time uh, to create some sort of these uh, edges of these rounded corners where different road types meet and something like that. And this place that I'm doing here, I should probably not reveal my tricks, but this is actually something that I had to do because... Uh, the curved uh, track which was in there it was impossible to put decals of the cobblestone around it so I just decided to make it green not put any decals around the curved part of the track and just put some trees and it actually turned out looking really nice and it kind of made uh, some interesting element to the park and uh, you know I also put some kind of a prop tram in that this is not by the way the tram that i'm going to be using at this time period but i just put a prop there just to you know have it there so that we can uh, see something in there just to kind of liven it up let's say but uh, further down this uh, tram road i'm actually going to be using already a concrete uh, pavements for you know for the sidewalks because it's really difficult to work with the decals where the roads are curved so I'm just going to make it a bit easier for myself so uh, it's probably best to just use the concrete from now on and this time period already saw concrete sidewalks so it's not that off anyway I'm kind of uh, making sure that this uh, square is going to have some people in it I'm putting some props uh, for these uh, kinds of stands like fruit stands and all those kinds of things and also some park people generators so that people can actually hang out in the square and it's going to look kind of all right uh, also some of you commented in the past episode that uh, I have way too many cars in the city and yes that's definitely true but that's unfortunately how the city works now I of course could ban parking in you know most parts of the city but that would only result in more and more uh, you know pocket cars and the only way you can disable pocket car behavior is basically allowing the realistic parking behavior and you know if you don't provide parking space then that's kind of pointless to even do so Yes, in the cinematics, uh, apart from people with, you know, not exactly, you know, fitting clothes, we also are going to see a bit many more than more cars than we would see in this uh, time period and real life. So that's just something that, uh, you know, the game's limitation just shows. There's kind of nothing I can do about that. We are also going to see uh, a lot of ambulances for some bizarre reason. A lot of ambulances just spawned from one fake hospital that I had to place for the simulation's sake. So again, I apologize that for that, but hopefully it's not going to be that terrible. Anyway, we are almost at the end of this episode. I'm just going to put some uh, tiny little details in some of these places, and we are obviously going to go to the cinematics. So that's all for today's episode. I'm not yet sure what we are going to do in the next episode. I'm still building the Aurelia for this week, so I haven't really built Aldengrad yet for the next episode, but we are probably going to just uh, hang around these areas and probably focus on building, you know, just, uh, just expanding these uh, things that we already did. So you know, something to stay tuned for. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this week's episode of Altengrad. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then you can always put a thumbs up underneath the video, share the video with your friends if you think they might like it, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I will see you with some next video. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.